You love bacteria, take antibiotics, use mouthwashes that kill 99.9% .9 of bacteria. No, we want to keep some good bacteria in the mouth. We don't just want to kill all bacteria to maintain the environment healthy. We need some good balance. Having a healthy oral microbiome is an essential pillar to help us keep bad bacteria under control. Pathogenic bacteria in low numbers is what we're looking at. I'm Dr. Maria Floro and this is Mind Your Mouth. I'll be sharing with you the truth about oral health that most people completely overlook. If you're ready to go beyond the basics, challenge the myths and truly transform your well-being, let's get started. On this episode, we're going to be busting some of the most common myths in the dental industry. So stay with me because I'm sure you do believe in some of these myths. This is one of the most common conversations that I have with people. Even friends come to me and ask me, Maria, what should I use to clean my teeth? I hear about charcoal, I hear about fluoride. There's so many talks nowadays. So I would like to start by saying that According to WHO, the World Health Organization, decay, yes, decay, cavities, yes, it is the number one disease in the planet. It's funny how people do not see cavities as a disease, but in fact, cavities are caused by bacteria. It is a bacterial infection and on a very small organ of your body. So a lot of people just dismiss that because no one is looking at the infection. A lot of the times people don't feel anything. But imagine that you have an infection on your nose. What are you going to do about it? You don't feel anything, but it's there. Are you just going to leave it? Sadly, it's very common, not only in adults, but in kids as well. It is five times more common in kids than asthma, for example. So we see five times more decay than asthma on young children. Gum disease is up there too. And again, we are talking about bacterial infection. What we fail to understand as health professionals is that our mouth is connected to at least two vital systems in our body. So myth number one, what happens in the mouth stays in the mouth. So what do we need to do? Kill off bacteria, take antibiotics, use mouthwashes that kill 99.9% .9 of bacteria. No, and we're going to talk about this later. We want to keep some good bacteria in the mouth. We don't just want to kill all bacteria that's sitting there because we need some good balance. We need good bacteria in our mouth to maintain the environment healthy. Myth number two, all bacteria are bad. No, not all bacteria are bad. In fact, we want to have good bacteria. Having a healthy oral microbiome is an essential pillar to help us keep bad bacteria under control. Pathogenic bacteria in low numbers is what we're looking at. What we do nowadays in dentistry, and I'm really passionate about it, is that we can actually collect a sample of plaque, a little bit of saliva, and look under the microscope and see the numbers of good bacteria versus bad bacteria. We can sometimes see some parasites there, but we definitely like when we see good bacteria in the mouth. I have seen patients who get addicted to mouthwashes, that they can get instant bad breath once they stop using certain mouthwashes. And that's because we've created an imbalance. We've created an environment where bad and good bacteria are missing and we cannot maintain health in an environment like that. What most recent studies have also shown is that the mouthwashes with alcohol have been connected to different types of cancers, such as mouth cancers and colorectal cancers. So please be mindful of what you put in your mouth. Many toothpaste kill good bacteria and bad bacteria, and it is not different with essential oils. We tend to believe that essential oils are natural and it's fine to use any essential oil, but we know nowadays that things like eucalyptus and peppermint are very dangerous inside the mouth. So please, Make sure that you look at the research. Make sure that you make informed decisions of what you're putting in your mouth. Don't follow the hypes. Don't follow the crowds. Speak to a professional that you trust. So what to do? First, we want to be using prebiotics. 
what are prebiotics? Prebiotics are different than probiotics. And I know that a lot of, a lot of people get this mixed up. Prebiotics are the foods that feed the good bacteria or the bad bacteria sometimes. But we want prebiotics to feed the good bacteria. We want to make sure that we have higher numbers of good bacteria when compared with bad bacteria. So things like xylitol, we hear a lot about xylitol today and we want to have xylitol on our chewing gum or even on our mouthwash. When we need to use a mouthwash, um, we can have xylitol on our toothpaste as well. So make sure that we feed this good bacteria and xylitol is a great way of doing that. Uh, so myth number three. Sugar is what creates cavities. In fact, cavities are a multifactorial disease. It's not just one thing that creates cavities. So we can't just blame sugar for cavities being there. Like any other disease, it depends on the environment that the bacteria is in. And it also depends on a lot of other factors. I want to go deeper on each one of these factors because I know that this can have a good impact in your life and in the lives of people that you care about. One of them is diet. So what diet does is it provides the substrate, it provides food for the bacteria that live in our mouth. So if we give good food to our body, good bacteria are going to grow from that. If we give sugars and um, some forms of carbohydrates, we will feed the bad bacteria. And that also creates a pH imbalance in saliva. So we want to make sure that our pH sits at an alkaline environment. We know that teeth tend to break down. We see the research showing that teeth break down on an acidic pH. So we want to make sure that we keep that pH at number seven. It's very easy to check that as well. You can go to the chemist or to a health food shop and buy those strips. You can spit on them and see the color that the strip turns into. Measure that and see where your pH is sitting. It's important to be aware that that's going to change depending on what you've eaten and how far from your last meal you're measuring it. Real quick, your mouth is the gateway to your overall health and at Casarina Dental our focus is on you. If you're ready for a holistic approach to dental care, book your appointment now via the link in the show notes. Now back to the episode. We know that our body is healing all the time. So as we have our mouth exposed to some acids, we create demineralization. So what that means is that we start losing minerals from the enamel and the enamel is the hardest structure in our body. It's where we have most minerals. It's even harder than bone. So what the body does, once that it detects that we've lost some minerals there through saliva, through other good components in our body, uh, we see healing happening and we call that remineralization. So what we want to do, we don't just care about what we eat, but how often we eat and what nutrients we're giving to our body. So let's talk about frequency a little bit here. When we talk about frequency, we want to allow our body to heal. I know that you probably have heard about fasting and intermittent fasting nowadays, and that goes against that traditional model of nutrition that we probably my generation grew up with, that we should eat every three hours. In fact, what we see the research showing when we're looking at fasting, but going back to our mouth, our oral environment, fasting is what's going to allow time for healing to happen. Yes, on the teeth as well as in the body. Um, when it comes to teeth, we need to allow the time for the remineralization. But if we keep acids in our mouth, if we keep dropping our pH, what's going to happen? The body won't have the chance to remineralize. And yes, we are going to see more bacteria. And not only, only the time, but we see more bad bacteria growing because we're feeding the bad bacteria all the time. So one thing that I wanted to make sure is that you keep some good space between meals. You 
keep some fasting time for healing to happen, but the nutrients that you give to our body, I want you to pay attention to. And make sure that you look for uh, a professional that's going to help you with that. That's a little bit of outside of this podcast, but make sure you talk to a nutritionist, to someone that you trust, a health professional that's going to help you with that. So just a very important tip here. What I wanted to be aware of is that, yes, vitamin D and K2 are not just good for bone, but they're very good for your teeth as well. So you can even spray a little bit of vitamin D and K2 on your toothbrush and brush your teeth with that. The other thing that's very important is dry mouth. We don't want high intakes of caffeine before bedtime because I don't want you to go to bed with a dry mouth. It's a perfect environment for bacteria to grow. Some medical conditions, some people that cannot brush their teeth properly, we tend to see more disease happening in the mouth with patients with certain uh, medical conditions. And now this one I find really funny. And a lot of people say to me, Maria, I have really bad teeth teeth because my mom has bad teeth, my dad has bad teeth, it runs in the family. And that's really, really funny because um, it's sometimes it's hard for us to take accountability on things. But what's really important to know, know the research, 10% of oral cavities happen because of genetic factors. All the other 90% happen because of our choices. So remember that next time you're going to bite on that chocolate. Poor oral care, of course. If you don't brush your teeth, guess, what, guess what's going to happen? Yes, you are going to have gum disease or you're going to get cavities there. Lastly, I want to say this. Please be aware of what you're putting in your mouth. I cannot emphasize this enough. Harmful products also create gum problems and oral problems. So make sure you read the label and make educated decisions for yourself. Myth number four, cavities on baby teeth don't matter. We don't need to, tr to treat them. The teeth are going to fall out anyways, so why care about them? No, in fact, baby teeth are very, very important. One, you don't want to have bad bacteria in your baby's mouth or in your kid's mouth because you're not going to look after that. Second, we need those teeth to guide the path of growth for the adult teeth. What we see is that we have more than 70% of patients that have lost their teeth prematurely. So that we had baby teeth missing from an early age. The adult teeth wasn't ready to come through and we ended up with crowded teeth, uh, breathing problems, all types of problems that we don't want to have. So let's avoid that by looking after the baby teeth as well as the adult teeth. Listen, what toothpaste to use. There is a big variety of brands on the market nowadays. What I want you to look for, number one, is nanohydroxyapatite. Yes, nanohydroxyapatite is the gold standard for the toothpaste now. It helps a lot with your enamel. We're going to talk about this on the next episode in a little bit more details, but look for nanohydroxyapatite. Myth number five, bleeding gums are normal. It's normal to have some blood on my toothbrush or when I wake up or even when I floss. Look, it's not normal. Imagine that you're walking around and touching something and your hand starts bleeding. Is that normal to you? No. So it's not normal to have your gums bleeding as well. Did you know that people with gum disease have 23% higher chances of dying from any other disease? And people with bone involvement, so when the gums are sick, but the bone is sick as well, have 46% higher chances of dying from any other disease. Because why is that? Why do we have this high statistics on death? Yes, I'm talking about death contributed by oral disease because the immune system is actually focused on something else. The immune system is not focused on fighting the disease alone that the person is facing, but it's fighting what's happening in the mouth as well and something that's very easily preventable. It is also worth mentioning here that people that never floss and they think it's fine, no, what the statistics have shown, the studies have shown that we see a 30% increase in mortality for non-flossing patients. So are you going to start flossing now? 
Thank you for, so much for watching this episode. I hope that this has brought value to you. Make sure that you follow us. Send this episode to the people that you care about. And if you have any questions, if you want me to talk about anything here that I haven't covered on this episode, make sure you comment. I'll go through every comment here and I'm going to help you look after yourself. See you on the next episode. Thank you for tuning into Mind Your Mouth. These episodes have been created for you. If you found this conversation helpful, the best way to support the show is by leaving a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And don't forget to subscribe on YouTube so you never miss an episode. For more tips on holistic dental health, follow me on social media at Casarina Dental. In the meantime, Take care of your smile, take care of your health, and I'll see you in the next episode.